My coverage of Computex 2016 is proudly sponsored by Fractal Design, MSI, and G-Skill. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at G-Skill. Let me give you a table of contents of what I'm about to talk about. G-Skill peripherals. We got new keyboards. We also have some new power supplies. Is a power supply a peripheral? No, it's not, but who cares? We're also going to talk about memory. We're also going to let you guys choose what new mouse G-Skill should make in a different color and flavor. Finally, we're going to show you the overclocking world stage where they're doing tons of overclocking. All right, back to the first thing I said. This is a KM770 RGB. It is an RGB mechanical keyboard, as the RGB should imply. Uh, RGB seems to be very, very popular here at Computex this year. We've already seen this in the KM780 trim, which is actually right up here above it. The KM780 has this like a, an additional bar that goes around the outside. They basically have some additional materials. It also comes with uh, accessories such as the keycap set. This does not, which means it's going to be less expensive. They've also sort of streamlined the uh, wrist rest to make it a little bit more comfortable. And one of my complaints with the KM780 was that this top row of uh, media function keys was not RGB. It lit up in all red. They've changed that, so now the media function keys do light up in all red. The volume button is not, but we are told that they're working on a firmware update, so you'll be able to disable that if you don't want to see the red on there. Everything else is all RGB, though, which is how things should be, as we know. Other than that, you get all the same features of the KM780, including uh, a USB pass-through, as well as a mic and headphone pass-through, which is pretty nice. This keyboard's been doing really well, but this uh, KM770 is going to be a little bit cheaper. G-Skill's not quite ready to provide us an actual sale price, but we're expecting this to be available in Q3, which is coming up really soon. Here's another new keyboard from G-Skill, the KM570MX. This is a much simpler design. Pretty straightforward, you know, it's a keyboard, right? But uh, what they're doing here is giving you a more affordable variety of the Cherry MX-enabled full 108-key keyboard. Uh, Cherry MX switches, we're, gonna, we're told that it's going to be available in blues, browns, as well as reds. Uh, it's got a dedicated volume control. Doesn't have a lot of the extra features of the KM770, but again, it's coming in at a much more compelling price point. $99.99? That's pretty good for a full Cherry MX mechanical keyboard. As for availability on this one, we're expecting it worldwide in about Q4, but it'll be available in China before then, so if you live in China, you can get that early. Power supplies. This is the G-Scale Ripjaw series of power supplies. The, uh, they're available in 80 plus gold, as well as 80 plus platinum varieties. Look. Look how heavy it is. You can't see how heavy this is. That doesn't even make sense. Anyway, they're fully modular though. Platinum, of course, on this one, hence the platinum design on the side. Looks pretty nice. Pretty straightforward. Power supplies are actually being developed by a couple different OEMs, so hence the different uh, logos and branding on this one. PS 1200P, PS 1250P, so 1250 watts, 1200 watts. Down here we also have an 850 watt version, which is also fully modular, of course. These are all fully modular. And then finally, we have the 850 available in gold. And you know gold is nearly as good as platinum and it usually costs a little bit less. Very nice power supplies. And now for some memory. We're specifically talking about Trident Z memory, which uh, I've actually been asked about a lot since I used some in my 6950X Benchmarks video. What I was asked was, when is this going to be freaking available? Well, guess what? Like next week. Probably on Newegg first and then available more widely after that since g Skill usually uh, does some exclusive with Newegg's off the bat. But right over here we've got an orange variety. Uh, this is a 3200 megahertz kit. Cast latency of 13. That's really fast and it's a 64 gig kit. This one's significant because they're doing 16 gig dims. We did not see this speed in 16 gig dims up until this year. We only had 8 gig dims before. Same thing goes on over here, 4133 kit. This one is uh, the actual color scheme that we've already seen. G-Skills, of course, expanded this, so they have sort of a silver, a black, and then they have different top bar cross plates that they can put across those. This one has a cast latency of 19, but 4133 megahertz speed. Quite fast. Moving up the line, we have 4266. The memory just gets, the more left you go, the faster the memory gets. This one also is using the uh, standard color scheme that we saw before, cast latency of 19, 1.4 volts, and again, 8 gig dims, but that's really fast memory, 4266. Speaking of really fast memory, how about the fastest memory kit that they have at Computex? That's this one right here. Look, it's yellow and black. I kind of like the yellow and black. It looks pretty cool. I kind of want to make a yellow and black build now. Isn't that weird to get one piece of, of hardware that's a specific color scheme, and then I want to build a whole computer around it? I've done it before. Anyway, 4500 megahertz, cast latency 16, and these are 8 gig DIMMs as well. This is just a buy two kit that we're looking at right here in this uh, Z170 OC formula from ASRock. But that's some screaming fast memory. Now, what would you want to do with screaming fast memory? You'd want to put it into a very fast system, of course. This, here's another very fast system. This is the last kit on this line, 3466. 64 gig dims, cast latency of 14 on this one. That's some tight, tight timings, man. Tight. But uh, let's, let's talk practicality, shall we? 
really fast memory, what's it do for you? And you get a little, little frame or two in games, you know, it's kind of exciting. But a really good implementation of really fast memory is actually going to be for something that uses an integrated GPU, an iGPU, because the iGPUs often share the memory speed, or the actually shared memory for the iGPU. You guys know what I'm talking about. So that's why we have this kit right here. DDR4 20, uh, 3333, this is a 32 gig kit, 16 gig DIMMs by two, and these are SO DIMMs, which is why they have it in this little Intel Skull Trail nook down there, powering this little system. And uh, we don't have direct benchmarks for you, but we're told boost in your nook or say a gaming laptop with these DIMMs is going to greatly improve the performance of the iGPU. And that is useful. All right, I'm breaking the rules now. I'm inside the lines. I might be trapped here forever, but uh, let's talk X99. X99 gives you DDR4 memory quad channel, which is better than dual channel. Uh, and you, of course, get eight DIMM slots. So that means you can get some insane memory configurations like this 128 gig kit that they have here. This again is the uh, yellow and black aesthetic. DDR4 3300, 1.35 volt cast latency 16. I need a 128 gig memory kit. Why? RAM disk, man. I'm gonna make a RAM disk. I'm gonna make a really big RAM disk with 128 gig kit. Here's another 128 gig kit, cast latency of 14 on this one. How's that possible? They made it tighter. Well, the speed isn't quite as much, 3200, but tighter timings. This one again is the, uh, oh no, this is kind of a different color scheme. It's that sort of slate gray with the red on top. That's pretty sexy. Moving up the line, we have a DDR4 3600 kit. This is a 64 gig kit, so they're using eight gig dims. This one has a gray and white crossbar. And actually, it's in an Asus uh, X99 Deluxe 2, which I have. And I think I need this memory because it matches so perfectly with that motherboard. Uh, these are all using, of course, Broadwell E processors. So this is a 6800K. That was a uh, that was a 6900K over there. This is a 6950X right here, the big daddy. Uh, this is sort of that darker gray with the white cro crossbar kit right here. 3600 megahertz, 64 gig kit, 8 gig by 8 gig by 8 dims. That makes sense, and a cast latency of 15. Moving up the line, more Trident Z, again with a lighter gray and the white crossbar. This one's a Gigabyte Designare motherboard. That also matches quite nicely. 128 gig kit, 3466 speed, with 16 gig dims, cast latency 16. There's so many varieties here. Just if you, if you want speed or if you want timings, you can do either one. I don't know, what do you prefer, speed or timings? I like both. Finally, we have one more kit down here. This is a 3466 speed kit, 128 gigs again, 16 gig by eight DIMMs, cast latency 16. It's paired up with the 6950X, and this one's sitting in an X99A godlike gaming carbon motherboard, which is sexy. I have one of these at home too. I have too many X99 motherboards, I've just realized that. That's kind of, that's not a bad problem to have. Anyway, so that's all the memory that they have on display here. I know it's a lot, but uh, I have a question for you guys, and then we're gonna check out the overclocking world record stage. Guys, here's where we need a little bit of help from you. G-Skill has their MX780 mouse. It's got an 8200 DPI gaming grade Avago sensor. I love Avago sensors, they track so nicely. Eight programmable buttons, four zone, four zone customizable RGB lighting. And look, this is a white version. So this has white with sort of a black on the inset there, and then of course the lighting. That looks pretty nice. I like the white version. Basically what G-Skill is going to be doing is they're going to be doing two of these new mice, but they have four versions here. So we got the white with the black. Here is the more traditional black, and then it's sort of got uh, red on the inside there. Granted, the lighting that we're looking at right here is a little bit off, so please uh, bear that in mind. Above that, we also have a white version with a blue sort of inner, uh, inner cage right there. That looks pretty nice. Not too bad at all. And then finally up at the top, here in the dark. And finally up here we have white with sort of more of a teal or perhaps aqua inset, which sort of has a, a light and, and carefree look, I think. That's kind of pleasant though. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna post a link down in the video description and, and uh, G-Skill is basically asking people to go to their Facebook page and vote, vote on which of these they like the best and whichever two win, they will actually produce. Let's round out our coverage of the G-Skill booth here at the G-Skill OC World Record stage where they typically invite overclockers from around the world at Computex every year because there's always new hardware to come and basically overclock the crap out of it. So up here we got 6950Xs and they're also working with GTX 1080s and uh, we had the chance to check out Vince aka Kingpin setup which is actually pretty insane. Now he's been doing overclocking for quite a while. He holds, holds the 3D Mark world record right now for four-way SLI and um, you know he basically said he wanted to do something new, something a little different. So basically he has a Mortal Kombat like arcade stick setup thing 
those are wired into some valves, which are connected up to these massive LN2 tanks. LN2 tanks are pressurized, so basically he can simply push a button to open up the valve and send the LN2 into the pot to cool down, of course, the GPU or the CPU. Uh, this is not just because it's fun to push a button to do this. It does make it a little bit simpler, but it also, according to him, helps conserve about 30% of the LN2 that you use. And depending on where you are, LN2 can be pretty damn expensive. So it's both practical and fun. I also just like watching this type of overclocking in general because it's it's it, there's loud noises. There's like all the, the smoke that flies around everywhere. It's very visually appealing. I talked to Vince about his overclocks on his 6950X. He said he was getting up to about 5.2 or 5.3 across 10 cores, which is absolutely monstrous for a chip like that. Asked him about the 1082. He didn't give me some numbers for that. I get the feeling he's actually not quite satisfied with where he's getting to this point. Still waiting for some, maybe some voltage unlocking or maybe in or NVIDIA to sort of open up that chip for maximum overclocks. Anyway, though, guys, that is going to wrap it up for G-Skill coverage here from Computex 2016. I'd like to say a big thank you to my sponsors, G-Skill, of course, as well as Fractal Design and MSI. Guys, if you're enjoying this co coverage from Computex, hit the thumbs up button, click those sponsor links down in the video description, and we'll see you in the next video.